ओके सो वेलकम बैक फ्रेंड्स सो आफ्टर शॉर्ट ब्रेक वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अगेन सो इन एस्टर डेज क्लास वी हैव सीन द मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेस ऑफ दिस मेटल मैट्रिक्स प्रोसेस मेटल मैट्रिक्स कंपोजिट एंड द सेरामिक्स मैट्रिक्स कंपोजिट सो दिस प्रोसेस होल्ड्स गुड फॉर सेरामिक्स एज वेल एज मेटल सो दीज जनरली दीज आर एप्लीकेबल फॉर द मेटल मैट्रिक्स कंपोजिट सो एस्टर डेज वी हैव सीन दिस द लिक्विड स्टेट प्रोसेस ओके so just in short like uh, i'm going to summarize what we have uh, <coughs> discussed yesterday so this uh, liquid state process is a process where you are going to take this uh, crucible and you are going to put the particle a and particle b okay both are in a solid state or you can add the particle b when you converted a into a liquid state that is this uh, matrix a is nothing but the matrix and b is nothing but the reinforcement and when you start giving the supply that is the heat as the heat can be electrical or uh, <coughs> uh, thermal or chemical or gas whatever it is so once the heat is supplied uh, to above beyond its uh, melting point then this is converted to liquid so in this liquid you can add some reinforcement particles and this is allowed for uh, stirring so once this is uh, stirred so the mixing is homogeneous and this is taken in a mold or a crucible or in the cavity then <clears throat> after solidification you are going to get the product so here the treatment of particle a and particle b or the matrix and reinforcement is done under the minimum one should be in a liquid state so generally the liquid state will be under the matrix particle okay so this is what the liquid state process so yesterday we have discussed in detail in detail about this but in just a short i'm going i'm briefing out now so next is uh, dural can process that we have seen we have taken the powders powders of ceramic then you are going to have the metal powders then both are taken in a container and it is melted to a liquid state then this is converted to ingots okay so ingots of different shapes for the different applications okay so this is dural can process so next is squeeze casting process that uh, we have seen in earlier case so this uh, squeeze casting process is nothing but it's a combination of casting and forging okay so this is the liquid in a container i'm going to take okay so after that i'm going to ap apply the plunger okay i'm going to apply the force with the help of plunger then this uh, metal is going to get uh, dispersed like this and the one i take this back ram then this can be a hydraulic ram or a pneumatic ram after solidifying so i'm going to get my product like this so this is the product okay so this is nothing but the casting and forging process so this casting is nothing but you are going to get the particle a that is the matrix into the liquid state then it is mixed with a particle b that is the reinforcement then it is stirred continuously for the homogeneous then the ram is applied with the help of the hydraulic system by applying then what will happen here the squeezing will happen so because of this application of force the material flows upside uniformly in all the circumferential direction or uh, dimension of the ram then after cooling the after uh, cooling that is the solidification happens after the solidification uh, this product uh, will be freezed completely so this freezed product is taken out so this is having better properties whereas this uh, thickness of this can be maintained less than 1 micron so if you want to do this dimension achieve this dimension by using the machining operations or in a rolling operation it is very very difficult and it is almost uh, insignificant we cannot do that but whereas by using a this type of technique that is a squeeze casting even you can have the dimension of 1 mm to 1 micron okay so that is what the advantage of this uh, squeeze casting process 
okay so this is nothing but the combination of the casting and forging process so here depending upon the rate of squeezing that is how much amount of force you are going to apply okay and then at what speed okay at what speed or velocity the ram is coming down and in what speed the material is flowing up the what in what speed the material is flowing upside so based on this the property of your squeezed casting is dependent so these are the advantage of squeeze casting process so here only thing you need to have the high melting point in order to convert this into the liquid state so the you require a furnace of high capacity where you need to have the matrix material into the liquid state for that you require a high investment and here you need to apply the force by using the hydraulic system even in the forging process you are going to use the hydraulic system okay so there the cost is high and the rate of impact is very high means the deformation rate of the material is very very high. means the material is flowing more by deformation and it get uh, it is getting cracked and then it is deforming in the forging case because it's in a semi solid state so whereas in this it is in a liquid state the flowability of the liquid metal is very very better compared to the semi solid state so in the semi solid state where the forging is carried out you need to apply more quantum of force to deform the material here not much force is required to deform the material so this is what the advantage of this squeeze casting process means by using the lower force okay by using the lower force the material will be squeezed or the shape will be taken with low thickness okay so which is if you want the thickness below 1 mm you cannot achieve by any of the process okay it is very very difficult to get the thickness of 1 mm or 0.5 mm uniformly throughout its cross section and throughout its thickness it is very very difficult but whereas in a squeeze casting process it is very very easy so next is spray forming process that we have seen in yesterday's class the spray forming process where the entire process is carried out in a container which is called as autoclave so this is filled with a gas in order to separate from the atmosphere so inside it is of a low pressure outside it is of high pressure or that is atmospheric and here it is inside is low pressure or partial vacuum and here there is a work table which is connected to the x direction as well as y direction okay the movement of table is done in this and in this direction here on this the material is kept uh, to be painted or to be coated it is placed on this uh, work table and here there is a outlet and here you have the atomizer or nozzle okay and here you have the cooling media and here you are going to spray the material so this is the deposition and the table is moving in this direction so here you have the thundish so this is filled by the molten metal of a and b that is matrix and reinforcement so this is atomizer or nozzle okay and these are the uh, cooling rings okay and this is the spray and sometimes this part b that is reinforcement is taken directly here and it is not mixed in the liquid state directly it comes and gets mixed here and comes in the <coughs> atomizer so that is also possible 
so here the deposition of the material is very very less and the controlling is very very fine because of the partial vacuum no interference <coughs> is there and no defects is there and the coating quality is also very very beautiful and it is very lustrous okay so that is what the advantage of this spray forming process so the material is built gradually okay so like this so this is the first coat then it is second coat then third coat fourth coat okay the table will be moving up and down and this is how the material is constructed so here the advantage is <coughs> the material is deposited in the form of a fine powder that is in the form of spray the material is built or the material is generated okay from the smaller particle to the bigger particles and uh, the disadvantage is <coughs> you need to have the entire vacuum here so which you, uh, and for that you require a vacuum pump and vacuum pump is very costly okay so apart from that this is limited for the smaller size it cannot be used for the bigger size if you want to have the bigger size component you need to have the bigger size autoclaves and in order to have the bigger size autoclave again it is more and more expensive and the nozzle and the atomizer controls the rate of discharge of this molten metal the rate of discharge of this molten metal means at what intensity it has to inject at what speed it has to inject and how much quantity it has to inject <clears throat> and what is the location of the injection all those things are decided by the the atomizer and the deposition rate of the material is dependent on the nozzle and atomizer okay so here this is the cooling okay in here you have the excess temperature and here you have the lower temperature there is a difference in the temperature also as a result of that the material is it has to cool here because it's a partial vacuum the rate of cooling time will be very very less so you need to cool faster that arrangement also we should do it so this is how <coughs> the material is being used for developing the three dimensional material <coughs> sometimes this material can be used just to coat on the surface for example the bottom may be of a copper on copper just you can coat a coating of gold okay so the bottom can be of polymer and then on that you can coat a chromium okay so <clears throat> similar materials or dissimilar materials can be coated on this so that is what one of the advantage of using this spray forming process and uh, next is the solid state processing that is the diffusion process okay so this diffusion is process is nothing but now we can consider there is a Okay, so here there is a container, close the chamber, and this is part A, and this is part B. Okay, so now this is preheated to a certain temperature. Then <coughs> this part is heated after heating. The force is applied. By application of this force, what will happen?
Okay. Now you can see this is the heat you are going to supply in a closed container and then you are going to apply the force. So initially these are two different <coughs> surfaces which are having the serrations like this. Okay. So this, the advantage of this process is it can join two similar materials as well as dissimilar materials also. That is what the advantage of this. Okay. So this process <coughs> Uh, is very advantageous for a dissimilar process. Now, if you want to join two dissimilar process, only process what do you need to have is the welding. So, welding is more more suitable or the most desirable only you know, for the two similar materials. For example, aluminium to aluminium, aluminium to co <coughs> aluminium to aluminium, copper to copper, okay, brass to brass, steel to steel like this, and titanium to titanium. Suppose if you want to combine aluminium and uh, brass so it is very very difficult to process okay then you need to have the brazing process again brazing cannot withstand for the longer temperature and for the longer load it is going to fail for the lower loads so then what has to be done next so then this process will give the advantage of combining two dissimilar metals also for example aluminium copper copper titanium steel iron <coughs> uh, steel and uh, titanium all those things can be combined here so now what is happening just by you are going to heat this and then you are going to apply the pressure okay then these serrations will get to come closer and the grain boundaries what are there they get closed and uh, you can see here the gradual decrease in the closing of these serrations and at one point of time entire material will become hom homogeneous and they will have the single grains so that is what the advantage of this uh, diffusion process okay so this is what the advantage so you are going to apply the compressive force under the heating so because of this uh, compressive force large quantity of heat is generated and the serrations what are there they are going to close down so those cracks which are having the minor cracks they are all going to close down and act as a single element so as a result of that you can bring two different materials like aluminium and uh, copper the copper and uh, steel and the uh, iron and uh, titanium so tungsten all these materials so which are very difficult to process <coughs> for example to use this uh, the titanium and the tungsten material and even the steel material to use some shape it is very very complex and tedious process and you are investing large quantity of money but uh, whereas in this two similar as well as dissimilar can be metals can be brought by applying the force okay so nowadays the this process has been developed to such an extent by assume that now this is part a this is part B. Assume that both are of a same material or a different material. Now we are going to assume it's a different material like uh, aluminium and copper. Now, not only I am going to uh, two different materials which are having the different serrations, I am going to apply the compressive load on this as well as on this. Then, apart from this, then I am going to give the sliding motion for this where this oscillates. Not only it is coming down, but it's also oscillating at very high velocity and high intensity. So by this, what will happen? So both the material will rub against each other. At this junction, okay, and then heat is produced and simultaneously the compressive forces are developed as a result of that you are going to get the single monolithic material of the different cross sections or the different <coughs> microstructure okay so this process nowadays it is getting developed but it is not popular and here the disadvantage is uh, such that okay so you need to apply the compressive force as well as this uh, vibratory that is sliding force simultaneously so and if the complexity of the job is high okay rather than straight it becomes more and more complex and it cannot be done 
it can be done only for the plane surface or not <coughs> and not for more complex surfaces only for the plane surfaces this method is used so wherever you require two different materials no there this process is going to work best the best compared to other processes okay so that is what the advantage of this the diffusion process so here basically what is happening is at these junctions the diffusions are going to happen because of this serrations and this heat and rubbing okay so because of this it is going to act like a monolithic material and uh, this is used for <coughs> difference of the material okay for two different materials and you have the for different applications uh, uh, combination of material you want and then how to join those only option is left is welding or you can do the riveting or you can do the you know, use the uh, fasteners like nut and bolts so if there is uh, not scope for all those things then only process which is left is the diffusion solid state joining process okay so this is what the simple process it appears to be very simple but it is more complex so it depends upon the pre heating temperature the application of force and the vibratory force and how much the <coughs> heat is generated not only because of the surface because of this contact the these serrations are going to break and they are going to get interlocked and gradually these are going to get closer okay and uh, it forms a minor cracks and because of the excessive pressure and heat these are also going to close and then you are going to get the one monolithic material okay so this is what the advantage of using this <coughs> solid state diffusion process so this is general process but now for the composite it can be also used like this so in a closed chamber or in the open atmosphere there are two dies okay or two press where they are separated out where they are moving up and down and it is supported by the foils assume that this has one foil and there is one more laminate on this again one more is there and then it is all is being pressed so when it is going to press i'm going to get the layers like this okay so like this so this is nothing but the sandwich structure so these are also called as laminate flies so now you can use the multiple laminates so the multiple laminates so first layer second third layer fifth layer seventh layer or alternate layer or two layers three layers like this then <coughs> you are going to apply the heat then because of this heat the diffusion is going to occur because of this uh, diffusion you can <coughs> combine the material so this is what the diffusion of the metal matrix composite and here i have explained the diffusion <coughs> joining process so here it is a the sandwich joining process and this is called as solid state diffusion process so next i'm going to explain you the deformation so this uh, deformation process is nothing but uh, now you have the die okay which is of uh, like this or it can be a cylindrical okay and it is having a opening here 
like this. Okay. Now inside we are going to put the material. Inside you are going to put the material, plain material, and then you are going to apply the force. So this material is coming here. Further it cannot go, and the opening is this side, and material is going to take shape on this side. So by this, what is happening? The material which is of like this, okay. So when it is passed and pressed, then it is taking the nature that is passed from here to here. So here there is no change in the final shape and size of the workpiece, but <clears throat> it has gone through a severe plastic deformation. Now you can see the material is being pushed in the change in the direction. So the material when it comes here, okay, automatically it has to pass in this direction because from top the load is applied. So further it cannot go. Okay. It cannot come downwards here. So it cannot come downward here. It has to take this path only. Okay. Then what will happen? The material is going to get squeezed in larger quantity. As a result of that, what will happen? The, there is change in the direction of flow of the material. Okay. Assume that there is a material here like this. Now when I am going to apply the force from here, so it comes here. So it gets compressed and it cannot flow either side, only it has to pass through this. Then the material starts flowing in this direction. So the material which is here, it starts flowing in this direction. So this is the input and this is the output. So here inside a large quantity of the grains <coughs> will be deformed. Because of this deformation, what will happen? The material will be squeezed out with a very high force and a large quantity of a deformation will happen because again with, because of this deformation there is a reorientation of the grains and the structure. So this you can carry out in the <coughs> cold working as well as hot working. So cold working will give best results but there are large quantity of uh, the cracks present inside the material. Suppose if you are going to do two or three passes then it is going to get very good results. So this is what the process of this uh, deformation process okay so this is single pass and single you can do the multiple pass and uh, this is called as SPD so this uh, SPD is nothing but severe plastic deformation so the deformation is having very severely because of this there is completely change of the mechanical properties of the this physical element okay so the strength is going to increase in the first pass 10 10 percent 15 percent 20 percent of the strength is going to increase and there is no change in the size or the dimension of the work product so that is what the advantage of this so similarly you have the rcs repetitive corrugative system okay spd <coughs> so like this there are many techniques which are used for getting the strength of these metal matrix composite and these are nothing but the deformation process and here the advantage and the disadvantage of this process is so the disadvantage is always one specimen will re remain inside the work material that is the dye material <coughs> so here the dye material should be of a very very high strength the die should be of very very high strength and it should be of a corrosion resistance and uh, also the wear resistance because every time you are going to push the material it is uh, subjected to very high friction and a high wear rate so the metal should be so hard such that the wear rate should be very very less so the wear resistance and it should have the good surface finish okay so if the internal surfaces are very good then what will happen the deformation will be very very 
easy means the material will not adhere to the the <coughs> uh, die surface and the punch surface so because of this what will happen the because of the good surface the material flowability will be very very good or else the material will enter into the cavity or the serrations as a result of that there is large quantity of wear and tear takes place okay so that is one of the drawback and the advantage is the strength the strength is increased up to 50% of the basic metal or the basic matrix and reinforcement so that is what the advantage of this okay and uh, <clears throat> the flowability of the material if the direction of the material is 100 so there is a possibility of material direction will change that it becomes 001 or 010 depending upon what direction it has been extruded or it has been uh, rolled okay so when the material is been extruded or rolled so there is a plane in the direction of the material assume that there is a material which is having like this this is x direction and this is y direction and this is z direction so this is 100 is the plane suppose now you are going to take only this part okay this part you are going to separate it out okay so which is a small part of this then this side is 1 this side is 0 other side is 0 now if you are going to use in other direction here then it becomes 1 uh, <coughs> 0 0 1 so this material is weak in this direction whereas strong in this direction so that you can avoid here so if you are going to use any of the application like this out of this bigger sheet then this side means this side it is very weak in nature whereas in this side it is very strong now <clears throat> it becomes exactly reverse here so this side it will be strong and this side it will be weak so to avoid this all this uh, complexity so if you are going to pass through this uh, severe plastic deformation or a solid state uh, processing then irrespective of this uh, direction material will be strong in all the three directions so that is what the advantage of this uh, severe plastic deformation or this uh, solid state processing process <coughs> okay so you can have the uh, change in the directions okay and here <coughs> the no no change in the final shape and size okay so there is no <coughs> change in the shape and size so many people even tried not only of single pass but of multiple multi pass so material is coming here in the first case second case the material is coming down and also coming up in the third case it is coming here here and here so people have tried multiple pass also so more the length so more the material is getting stuck in the material at the same time the strength is also increasing tremendously without compromising the final shape and size of the work piece so that is what the advantage of using <coughs> this process and here in this process there is no question of the miscibility so you can mix any material so you can mix aluminum and <coughs> copper so you can mix aluminum and silicon titanium and steel titanium and aluminum you can mix everything you just you put the material and apply the force because of the deformation of both the metals it is going to mix homogeneously and it it will come out okay so suppose if you are going to make <coughs> uh, the composite of uh, two metals and then you are going to pass through it then the strength increases tremendously so here the initial <coughs> initial size of the specimen or the initial dimension of the specimen is same that of the final dimension of the specimen so there is no change in the dimension of the specimen okay so many people are doing the research on this but still nothing concrete has been established <coughs> so this is what the advantage of using the solid state processing the diffusion process and the deformation process
and the last technique is vapor deposition process so this is similar to that of the spray <coughs> coating process only difference is the entire process is carried out in a autoclave or a closed container here the material is placed in a thin dish and it is supported by the heating coils okay when so this uh, material is heated once this material is heated the vapors comes out and uh, there is a substrate where all these vapors comes and gets deposited on the substrate on the surface and uh, this rate of deposition is very very uniform and uh, once it gets deposited there is a one <coughs> knife or a cutter where it is passed through this and whatever the material is deposited now it it gets separated out here it falls here and there is a container here okay so this process is called as vapor deposition technique and this is very very expensive process because you need to heat the material <coughs> above its melting point so then you are that uh the solid is going to get converted into the vapor state means it has to pass through the liquid state only after passing through the liquid state then it will convert it to the vapors and uh, you need you, you need to keep on supplying the heat until the last element or the last atom gets converted to <coughs> vapor so like this so it takes large quantity of time and also large quantity of heat and and it it has done in a closed container so this process is very very expensive okay hence this uh, process has been uh, used only limited only for producing the very fine powders and uh, what quality of powder you are going to get is the nano level powder you are going to get so the nano size micro powder you are going to get <clears throat> so that is what the advantage of this process and uh, this process <coughs> is not that popular because of the cost criteria and here there is no limitation of any metals so you can take any metal and that convert it into the vapor only the condition is you need to heat the uh, beyond its superheated condition so not only the melting point beyond the superheating point then only the metals are going to convert into the vapors so that is only the drawback <coughs> uh, or disadvantage okay so this is what the process of the vapor deposition process so this concludes your the composite unit and the next class i'm going to start with the last unit that is the nano composites okay so here <clears throat> just i am going to give you the small introduction about this uh, nano composites okay so if you have any difficulty with respect to this uh, composite fourth unit you are free to ask me any questions <clears throat> you can uh, write a mail or you can whatsapp or you can message me or you can call me and get your doubts clarified okay so the last unit is nano composites so it is having introduction and a concept of nano technology and nano materials and production of nano powders so now let us know the difference between the composites and the nano composites basically this uh, nano composites is the exten extension part of this fourth unit that is composites so composite has become very broad in category <coughs> and uh, we have seen the different categories of the composites okay based on the matrix based on the reinforcement based on the orientation based on the <coughs> alignment based on the processing parameters all these things so now what are these nano composites so it is a small part of this overall broad category called as composites <coughs> so here as we are aware there are two different particles in a composite called as matrix and reinforcement so here either matrix or reinforcement should be of the size of the nano that is or nano or near nano so it should, it means that it should be 100 below 100 nanometer size 
so this type of material which are used for this <coughs> application that is composites are called as nano composite so there are lot of advantages and the same time there are lot of disadvantages so compared to the advantages and the disadvantages here the advantages are more <coughs> the reason is so when we compare the bulk material and when we compare the nano material the strength of a nano material is very very big <coughs> now let us compare the two different parameters here now we we all know that uh, ants so ants are very familiar in our house we see everywhere so in the college as well as house or in anywhere outside <coughs> outside world we are going to see the small ants so we have even seen the elephant so now let us compare the ant and the elephant so elephant is very big in nature very bulk in nature very heavy in nature whereas ant is very small in size okay small in nature and it is very the size is very minute now when i give a small crystal of the sugar to the ant so the sugar crystal is heavier than the weight of the ant but ant can carry that weight of the sugar crystal which is more heavier than the ant itself whereas if i give the <coughs> a size maybe the sugar cane the crystal imagine a crystal of a uh, sugar to the elephant it can lift very easily but it cannot lift beyond its weight okay so even though if it it lifts so not to more than 5 to 10% of its weight so assume that the weight of an elephant is uh, 100 ton it cannot lift to more than 400 tons now imagine if i increase the size of an ant to the size of an element or uh, elephant then how much load it should lift okay assume that 1 gram ant is lifting 10 gram of uh, <coughs> uh, the sugar crystal now when i increase the size of an ant to the 1000 kg of that of the elephant then it should increase the 100 times of this sugar so it cannot lift why because as the material is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger so there are large quantity of defects are going to come in the material so as a result of that the strength also gets reduced hence the elephant cannot lift the weight beyond its Three to four, five times. Okay, so that is what the defect. Now similarly, now if my weight is around 70 to 80 kg, so I cannot lift a thousand kg or two thousand kg. Only I can lift two to three times of my weight maximum. Okay, so average general person. So why? <clears throat> Though my body is capable of lifting that weight, but I cannot lift because there are large in, in the bulk material also it happens similarly. as the material becomes bigger and bigger that is bulk and bulk in nature so there exist large quantity of internal defects and those defects can be of any type that what we have studied in the first unit so because of that the material will not withstand that particular strength what it has supposed to be okay so that is why the engs modulus of an any strength of the material when we are discussing the strength of the material when the single crystal of a a steel okay and the bulk material which is having multiple number of the crystals okay so when it is having the single crystal cell or a one unit cell the load what can bear is very heavy when as i increases the size of the similar unit cell in x direction y direction and z direction okay so it cannot take the that particular load okay because large quantity of defects are generated in the material as a result of that the strength keeps on getting reduced so this can be overcome by the nano composites okay so the richard feynman who is the well known scientist for this uh, nano materials he said that there is plenty of room at the bottom it means that if you can arrange the atom to atom wise to the side without defects then you can do miracles you can make the wonders so you can develop such a material so it it gives very better results compared to any other materials so that is what the advantage of using the nano materials and the nano technology so this is just a brief outline or the brief introduction that i have given about the 
fifth unit that is nano material and nano <coughs> composites so we'll stop here and we'll discuss in the coming class about this nano composites and with respect to the composites if you are having any difficulties or facing any problems just you can call me or mail me back i will <coughs> attend to those and let you know uh, more clarification about that okay so i'm going to stop here okay. and we'll see in the coming class okay thank you